we've had a lot of success in our careers with staffing companies and that's temp staffing and PEOs. And the, it's a difficult market. Let's just talk about workers comp. Dif, it's a difficult market for PEOs because I would say they're really paying for the sins of their fathers. There were years ago, and it's not that long ago, some poorly run uh, group captives and single parent captives. And there was a lot of abuse in the PEO marketplace. So much so like California, for example, they passed a law that said PEOs and staffing companies could no longer go self-insured for workers' comp just because of the, the amount of insolvencies in the, the workers' comp, uh, self-funded workers' comp. So, you know, at the end of last year, uh, we did a few programs and had a lot of success, one on the East Coast, one on the West Coast, with staffing companies. One was pure, uh, I guess they're both medical staffing. One did nursing, one did other medical staffing, but they were both in group captives. And typically a group captive is where you get a bunch of people, homogeneous risk coming together to say, we're going to all fund into this captive insurance company. And we all own our own little pro rata amount based on whatever our premiums are. And you have, I would call them an entrepreneur says, we're going to be the ones behind this. But both of those, they came into a medical group captive for workers comp or a group captive workers comp for medical people, not to be confused with medical group captives. But when they got in their their payroll was smaller and then it kept growing and growing and growing and growing. And when you're smaller, you know, we always talk about there's a special premium volume you need in order to get reinsurers interested. So what happened was their payroll, let's call it $60 million. Then it goes to 80, then it goes to a hundred. And at renewal time last year, they were at you know, one of them was at $400 million and one of them was $600 million. But let's take the $400 million. Now, in a group captive, their premium for workers' comp was about $2.5 million. Well, 2.596, so almost $2.6 million. Now, group captives at a smaller premium level can be a very cost-effective solution. Um, so there, the administrative fees... For example, 14%, reinsurance expense, 13%, premium taxes, three, claims adjusting fee, eight. Um, they had to put into a loss fund that was structured 11 state surcharges for all the different states that they were in, average 10.91%. So all in, they were at 60% in expenses. So on $2.6 million, that equated to $1.5, almost $1.6 million in just fixed fees and state surcharges. Now, if you're at half a million, let's make the math easy. If you're at a million dollars in premium and you pay six, 60% out, you know, that's $600,000 and you have that $400,000 to play with for to potentially play, pay claims. But when you're at $2.6 million. And they were paying out almost $1.6 million in just flat fees before dollar one of claims. That's where it gets to be super expensive. So we went to, and that was funded by a A10 or A12 carrier. I mean, a, a household name. And they'd actually gotten good claim servicing, which if you're talking to most people in any sort of group plan um, or in the traditional market, the first complaint you usually hear is, uh, you know, it, it's expensive and they pay a ton of claims that they really shouldn't. Um, so that's a common thing we hear. And I tend to dismiss it, but they actually liked the claims administrative, the, uh, the TPA that did their claims. So we went out to the same carrier that they were using in the group 
because you need a fronting carrier. You need an, and remember I said you could not go self-insured. So there was an admitted carrier that issues the policy. And then before they were in a group captive and they reinsured that risk to the group captive. Now going in their own single parent captive, they paid the premium to the fronting carrier. And then the fronting carrier reinsured all of that risk to their own single parent captive. But the cost to do that was a, a lot less money. So the cost for the carrier to issue that stop loss policy was $652,000. So in their old plan, they were taking $350,000 of every claim. And in the new plan, they're taking $500,000 of every claim. But the big difference is if they paid or when they paid that same $2.6 million, $650,000 was going out the door to the carrier to for them to pay the fees and to, is, to, and to give them the reinsurance. But now they're sitting on $1.95 million to pay claims. Remember, if we did the same exact premium between the group captive, they were left with about $1 million. In this scenario, they had almost $2 million in their captive to potentially pay claims. So a group captive is, was a great solution for them when they were smaller at 50 million of payroll and a hundred million dollars of payroll, but eventually they outgrew it. So that was the California client. It was the same exact scenario for the East Coast client. Their, their payroll had gone up and up and up. And especially during COVID, you know, the hospital and nursing staff was in big demand. Uh, so it was, it was important for them to look at the entire program to see what are their fixed expenses and, and could we trim the fat? And we were able to do a great job with that. So they use their captive to provide the workers comp basically deductible. And then we actually got the same exact reinsurer to provide it because their claims history was so great. They were running at about a 12 to 15% loss ratio. So if you think about on $2 million, 12%, that's less than a quarter of a million dollars. That's a, that's a really good loss ratio. It was actually, they didn't want to switch away. They liked Sedgwick, who was their TPA with the group captive. And they said, you know what? We like to stay. If there was any way we could stay with Sedgwick, and I didn't know if that was going to be a possibility, but reached out to him and Sedgwick said, yeah, we'd love to do it. Now, so the fixed expenses to do the claim through the group captive, remember, this is the same exact TPA and the same exact person doing their claims because they had an account representative. The, the cost per claim was $1,857 in the group captive. With their own captive, it was $1,055. So same TPA and same claims administrator on it. And they saved almost $800 per claim. And that's when you're, you realize just the power of taking the control away from the traditional market and even a group captive as you get bigger, the single parent captive can be a phenomenal solution to an individual uh, client's situation. Now, on top of that, they, they were faced with PAGA lawsuits. And that's in California, New York, it's the Private Attorney General Act. And, and basically, a, an attorney can sue on behalf of an unnamed group of employees and in a class action. So they'd had a $2 million settlement in, in PAGA. So we came in with a captive and said, you know what, because they couldn't get administrative actions or EPLI, Employment Practices Liability Insurance, that covered the uh, PAGA claims, wage and hour. Well, we wrote that policy inside of their captive insurance company. They had, you know, e-commerce, cyber. They were, it gotten too expensive. They decided to go naked on that coverage. We put that inside of the captive insurance company. 
Um, and then a couple other things, business income, business interruption that covered viral and bacterial events, um, commercial crime, commercial general liability, difference in conditions, because their policy, as you can imagine, had a ton of exclusions. So what we did is we took a, a, an overall holistic approach to what coverages do they have what premiums are they paying? What is their individual policy language? And what did we think the risks of the company were? And then we put together between the captives, the workers comp and all these other policies. So now they're completely protected and they're saving. You know, it, it's, it's not an underestimation to say they're saving over a million dollars a year just in their workers comp because they chose to go into their own captive versus a group captive. And as I said, I started this by saying a group captive is an ideal solution. So we, we sell and we, we recommend clients to get into group captives all the time. If their premium is such that it doesn't make sense to go into a single parent captive. And I would say that they're best in class. And that's, and it's not an underestimation to say that this company and the one on the East Coast were best in class at what they did. But it doesn't matter if you're a trucking company that's best in class. If you're a um, automobile distributor, you know, we're working with a beer distributor in New Jersey and they have a 6% loss ratio. They're with a state fund in New Jersey and they're at a 6% loss ratio on their workers' comp. And every year they go back and they beg the state fund in New Jersey, can we get a little more credits? Can we do this? And they say, no, you have no other pivot point. So there isn't a place for them to go. Well, a captive is an ideal solution. So if you are, if your clients are best in class, or if you're listening to this and you're best in class at what you do, you know, you definitely should explore a single parent captive if you're large enough, but definitely there are ways to structure group captives that for your businesses where you can save a significant amount of money.